welcome to the Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Bird. Folks, I'm back, and I am Tony, and I am your host tonight for the Hookup on Music, episode 93. We took a week off last week, but guess what? We're back this week, and we hope not to take any more breaks uh, because we've been planning stuff, and we continue to plan, and this week has been a busy one, a hectic one. Sometimes it could have been a headache. But one thing that always cures a headache is good music. And that's why we gather here today on the Hook Upon Music to talk about lots and lots and lots of good, good tunes. So uh, let's not pause and let's dig right in to the things that are making us feel good these days. All right. What do we got here? New releases. Uh, just talked about a couple weeks ago about this new Cure album that was dropping, Songs of a Lost World, the band's 14th studio album. Okay, it's first uh, release of new material in um, a crazy 16 years. Can you believe that? 16 years has passed since uh, The Cure has last released new material. But uh, they have come to town quite a few times, and they put on quite, quite, quite the show. What's also really cool is uh, reading recently, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Smith, has decided that he uh, really, 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 really likes those lower ticket prices, which we all love. We do not want to pay high ticket prices. So just know if you're going to see The Cure, uh, he is fighting for uh, the cause of having excellent ticket prices um, for everyone to enjoy. Um, This is the first time since the 1985 album the head on the door that all the songs were composed solely by singer guitarist robert smith um very interesting that's a very interesting fact um it is also their first studio album to feature the great reeves gabriels if you are not familiar with his uh work he has uh been known to work with david bowie and tin machine which was really really great but he is actually an excellent excellent guitar player that does not get talked about a lot um, I definitely like to, uh, look at, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, tin machine. Cause I don't know if you've ever listened to David Bowie's side project. Very, very different than a lot of other stuff that David Bowie has done. Um, but a little bit even, uh, rockier around the edges, but it's uh, very cool that he has joined in on this project. But, uh, the real praise goes to Robert Smith for this album sound. You know, um, a really good sound for the album, a really good sound for The Cure, Um, a really great uh, atmospheric album with great lyrics. Um, And honestly, it's produced by Robert Smith and Paul Crockett. If you are not familiar with uh, Paul Crockett's work, he has uh, worked with uh, The Great Cure before on Wild Mood Swings, um, Blood Flowers he was a part of. uh, while Mood Swings, he was the engineer, which is really cool because you could start as being an engineer and work your way up to uh, being the producer for the uh, Great Cure. But uh, what else has he done? Biffy Clyro. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I've caught them at the Aragon Ballroom one time opening up for uh, Run the Jewels and Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, very, very, very interesting. What's even more interesting is that uh, he has not produced an album um, since the heavy the glory is dead in 2012 so this is a little bit of a return for him to the studio but uh the tracks on this album are really really lining up to be something that i don't think is going to uh slip from uh anybody's uh peripheral of listening to it anytime soon because honestly it's got that sound um But this is kind of how I felt earlier in the year with the Rolling Stones' last album, Hackney Diamonds. I did a review on that if you go back and check that out. But that's kind of how this is. You know, I I, I feel like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Robert Smith has definitely uh, came to the table with something that I think is good for him. It's good for the band. Um, Definitely uh, was excited. Um, A Fragile Thing uh, heard that on the radio, and it was It was definitely something that was even different for me to hear from the band, which is definitely what you're always looking for is something that is different. But uh, I like some of the uh, track titles, War Song, End Song, um, and Nothing Is Forever. Just some really, really, really great tracks. All I Ever Am, um, 
we know we always talk about long tracks and wow the end track end song just happens to be 10 minutes we like when we dig into those 10 minute songs but uh going through some of the other guys who are uh, part of the band simon gallup if you um aren't familiar he first joined the cure in 1979 so uh, it's a lot of your favorite, oh, well, majority of all your favorite tracks that have uh, awesome bass lines. Um, Simon Gallup has been a part of the band. Um, he did leave the band for a little bit, um, but uh, he came back uh, to the band, you know, which is really great uh, because if he never came back to the band, um, so many awesome bass lines would uh, be lost. Um, but that's what was cool is that. Uh, he made up with Smith, and if you get any chance to see any live um, of them, he is still playing a great bass and would love to just sit down and listen to him and listen to some of his pedals uh, that he uses on some of these songs because just a lot of awesome atmospherics on um, his, uh, uh, tra- uh, his, his, his tracks. And if you even want to go a little further, I know this has nothing to do with music, but uh, after returning to the band, he ended up uh, being the best man in Robert Smith's wedding. But uh, back to this album, Robert Smith is uh, plays a six-string bass along with Simon Gallup's bass. He also plays keyboards, songwriting, um, vocals. You know, he definitely came up with the sleeve concept, which is definitely what you would expect from the leader of The Cure. Um, but uh, really, really, really going through some of the uh, reviews here, there, everywhere, um, it's getting... Um, getting good praise you know emotionally raw is what we're looking for from the cure and the cure is delivering it on this brand new album so if you have not yet please uh go back and check out songs of a lost world let us know what you are thinking and speaking of let us know what you are thinking um please 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 uh go back and onto the sadistic penguin studios.com and check out the 31 days of horror because i'm going to keep bringing this up Uh, all year long because to me halloween as the great ministry said every day is halloween but uh what i i I really enjoy digging through a lot of these songs um i mean monster mash okay next year get ready for the transylvania twist you know i mean that's what's cool here we're gonna keep doing this because there's just so many great uh awesome tracks um, to really be digging into and digging into further, which is uh, what we definitely uh, want here at the uh, hookup. We want to definitely be looking deeper into a lot of different stuff. So go and check that out because each one's got a cool little uh, fact. And uh, cool little facts are really, what's the word I'm looking for? Cool, because uh, we love doing the Monster Mash. Um, some great stuff on there, though. Typo negative, black number one. Um, for a band that is so, so dark, I definitely want to always listen to a lot of typo negative, but, uh, don't get to do that because, uh, my company that I keep, um, doesn't want to listen to that all the time. But, you know, what I do find really cool is when you look deeper and you find songs that you had no idea were as awesome as they were. Man, that song rules. Bloodletting, the vampire song by Concrete Blonde. Um, a really, really, really great track from, uh, well, 1990s Bloodletting, which is uh, crazy because the uh, track is called Bloodletting, the vampire song. So kind of the self-titled song, the vampire song, um, definitely deserves to be on every Halloween playlist. And what's crazy is that I uh, totally forgot about this song until, well, I was driving to work and the countdown was over. But uh, it totally brought me back to Concrete Blonde and honestly been doing really dig deeper into a lot of their stuff. Been doing dig deeper. That's a new phrase I just came up with there. Um, Bloodletting, though, uh, is the uh, 1990 album. Came out five days before my eighth birthday in 1990. Um, a great alternative rock album, which uh, has awesome appearances by uh, R.E.M.'s Peter Buck and Wall of Voodoo's Andy Preboy, which is pretty kind of awesome when you think about how cool you can have really, really, really awesome um, tracks. The really, besides Bloodletting the Vampire Song and forgetting how awesome that was, before digging deeper into this uh, 
was uh, recently I uh, looked into the only track I had heard in the last couple of years is the song Joey, which is very, uh, very, 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 uh, it's like a ghost-like song to me every time I hear it, um, which is kind of, I think, what they were going for. It is uh, sung by the perspective of a woman who sadly is in love with uh, somebody who's struggling with addiction which is really, really crazy, um, which happened to be about the uh, lead singer's um, relationship with a, a member of the band Walla Voodoo. Um, Walla Voodoo is, um, uh, oh, w- what's the word I'm looking for? They are one of my, they sing a, a really, really great track in um, the great Mexican radio, if you have not heard that from the 80s. Um, definitely a good good song. But uh, back to Joey, um, this whole album is just loaded with tracks like that, deep, incisive tracks that make you think, make you think deeper, which is, I think, definitely was the point of um, Concrete Blonde was to bring this perspective to everybody, was definitely want um, everybody to, which she was experiencing a breakup. So why not dig a little bit deeper in in some of these tracks, which is exactly what um, she did. So really glad that 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 happened and that came together on on this and this whole entire project um Jeanette uh Nepolitano who is uh, I think I pronounced that right I hope so um if not I will definitely get that right the next time I say it she is on vocals and bass guitar which is always one of my favorites is a singing um bass guitarist which never goes unnoticed by myself I'm digging deeper on the album. Paul Thompson was part of the band. And you're like, who's Paul Thompson? I don't know who that is. Roxy Music Drummer, which is really awesome to uh, see. He was a part of the band and as as this three-piece with uh, James Mankey and also guitars and production. But just a really great album. If you haven't dug into it or it's been a while, that's a really, really good one to dig into. Um, As is this, this classic, this classic album that I remember getting um and, and playing um so 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 much it is the amazing youth in asia by megadeth which you're saying to yourself uh it's been a long time since i listened to this one well i'm also about to tell you that uh, it just celebrated a birthday and you're saying uh well, yeah a uh, 30th birthday uh megadeth youth in asia which i can remember getting this album so if you're doing the math out there and in 1990 i was eight now I'm at 12, and I just pick up this album, and it is loaded with classics. Uh, really good tracks, a really good album. Not as good as the album prior to this, but uh, definitely seeing it celebrating its 30th anniversary had me thinking about the leadoff track, Reckoning Day, which rock. <laughs> Get a chance, check that out. Um, brought up a, a couple times on the show, but I can never deny the amazingness of a uh, tout le monde. Um, definitely, uh, please listen to that track. Um, it's French for to everyone, to all my friends, I love you, I must go. Um, one of my favorite songs of the, and what's crazy is I own this album, listen to a lot of it, but for some reason way back then, wasn't one I played quite a lot. It's one I'm playing a lot now. Definitely cool if you happen to ever get a chance to listen to the Japanese edition of this album. A Crown of Worms is on it. Um, and so is Holy Wars, The Punishment Due Live, Symphony of Destruction, um, and Sweating Bullets, which both those last songs came from the previous album, Countdown to Extinction. But uh, really cool celebrating a 30th anniversary. Um, definitely a, a good album. Um, debuted it at number four, debuted it at number four on the Billboard 200. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, that that first song and the second track, Train of Consequences, they just come right at you. Um, the whole album's got a very uh, ooh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a like a like a chugging, which is Train of Consequences. That's kind of what the guitar sound like on here, like a train. Um, next album, Cryptic Writings, which I'm sure we'll talk about at a later date, was equally good. Then there was a little downfall, but. Awesome euthanasia celebrating 30 years. Crazy. Uh, what's also awesome is when we could dig in and cut a slice of some cake. Um, cake, cake, cake. We love cake here. Um, and what we like about cake is that they're different. And we like things that are different here. And uh, we brought them up before. Um, tonight, we're going to uh, dig into uh, a little bit something different. A really cool cover that cake does. That uh, 
If you haven't had an opportunity, I, I would definitely suggest that you should take some time to check out. It is a cover of Black Sabbath's War Pigs. <laughs> hear it a little bit there can't play more of it that's about all i can play but what i can tell you is that it is worth your time and gold to be able to sit down and listen to that track fully and experience that there's many different live versions but uh the band itself john mccray um how he does it i do not know but he is a band that i definitely he is since i've heard them um going way back to i think in 1995 i heard rock and roll star that was the very first track I heard, which was off of their very, very first album, uh, Motorcade of Generosity, 1994. I think I got it there on track. Um, but 1996's Fashion Nugget, um, definitely remember working and buying the CD and working at Popeye's. And uh, Frank Sinatra, or, or friend is a four-letter word, definitely coming at you in all different um, regards. What I've always liked, and my favorite thing has always been, the way the guitars just kind of take off in some of their, their songs. I mean, their guitar is, is amazing. Um, then McCurdy on lead guitar since 1997 has really, really been bringing it uh, to, the, to the forefront trumpets. Vince DeFiore uh, been around since the very beginning with John McCray on the trumpet, the keyboards, um, drummer. Um, Todd Roper, um, been part of the band since 94 took a little bit of uh, sabbatical from 01 to 2006 but we really really gotta give praise to even the bass the bass that goes on in a lot of these songs really really awesome um and that is held um held by uh, daniel mccullough which is is cool um what's also really cool is that uh their albums are great. Six albums they've only released, though. They have not had a new album since 2011, are constantly touring, doing a lot of different things in the touring world. But I would like some new stuff, because this last album, uh, Showroom of Compassion, there's some good, good stuff on there. Sick of You, um, catchy track. That's what they are good with. They're good with the catchy tracks and getting people all into, well, into catchy stuff, which is what we like uh, in some regards. We love catchy. We love uh, when people are into the catchy. So, uh, you know, Kate delivers, you know. Um, but uh, check them out, uh, please. Check out any one of those six albums and get back to me at which one of those six is your favorite because you're not going to be disappointed. Um, you're not going to be disappointed in Temper Trap either, um, which is a little crazy to even talk about uh, because. Uh, they came back into my radar recently. Somebody suggested listening to one of their songs. And honestly, when they first came out, I wasn't a uh, a, a huge, huge, huge uh, fan of the band. But uh, it's got some good tracks, you know, after re-digging into them. A uh, band coming together in 2005. Okay, this is when they came together. But uh, their album releases, uh, they got some really, really, really good albums. Um, sadly, only three of them. But you go back to uh, their uh, very, very first album, Conditions, is pretty much where I have only been listening to. And that's what's great about this, is that being reintroduced to this first album is uh, awesome um, because there's a lot of good songs on there. Sweet uh, Disposition is the song that I had totally forgot about. A good, excellent vocal performance on this album. Um, a lot, a lot of kudos to uh, the vocalist who really, really does a great, great job at uh, getting the band to these new kind of like vocal heights, which is, well, when you're in a band, I think that's one of the keys is to uh, bring um, excellent, excellent vocals. And, um, well, I mean, Dougie, which is really cool because they're from Australia is his name, Dougie Mandaggy, um, is uh, the lead vocalist um, <clears throat> and also plays some rhythm guitar. Um, Tony Dundas, drummer, um, Jonathan Amory, bass, and uh, Joseph Greer, uh, keyboards and backing vocals, and also lead guitar. So, really good band. Uh, if it's been a while, I'm still digging through it. Uh, I think it's time you listen a little bit of Temper Trap. Uh, Jackson Brown, been a long week, folks. Uh, a foe, uh, it could be if you've been tired. This is a track that J Jackson is still putting on quality, quality live performances. <laughs> Well, no. 
slide guitar on that track is still, still cooking, still, still crackling. And if you get an opportunity, um, please listen to some Jackson Brown. There's some really good tracks by him. Song always brings a little bit of a, a little bit of a tear to my eye, the pretender. Take a little time um, this week. And I know it's if you've been listening to Megadeth's Euthanasia, you're probably not going to do this, but you just may. Um, the Pretender by Jackson Brown is just a great track, great um, a lyrical performance um, by a really great, great artist who I have had the lucky uh, opportunity to see open for Tom Petty. And then they both came out on stage and sang a song that I don't know if you know that Jackson Brown wrote, but the uh, great... Um, Take it easy, which is kind of cool that uh, everyone, you know, of course, the Eagles play it, but uh, Jackson Brown uh, co-wrote it. So it's kind of cool that uh, Jackson Brown puts out really, really, really good, 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 um, good stuff. Um, also very interesting, at the age of 16, while doing research, he wrote a track um, called These Days, which Nico uh, made pretty popular. Um, he also wrote several songs for the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Very interesting. Um, but for me, my introduction was Dr. My Eyes, a really awesome track um, that really comes uh, four years before The Pretender from 76. Um, digging into the album The Pretender, though, uh, definitely is something that uh, really, like I said, very, very powerful, very powerful lyrics. It's uh, pretty much... Uh, was composed um, a couple different locations, uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood, Hawaii. I know Hollywood is in Los Angeles, but that's what's crazy. Uh, he rented a store uh, front in North Hollywood and uh, also a tacky hotel in Hawaii. And he just kept composing and uh, defining this piano riff that you're going to hear if you end up listening to the track. But uh Really, really great. Um, drums are played by Jeff Porcaro and bass is by Leland Sklar, which is amazing. Um, and you want to also believe that's amazing is Fred Tackett, part of the Great Little Feet, a uh, great, 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 great musician. Um, also, Crosby and Nash were doing backup vocals. I can't speak enough of The Pretender, but please dig into The Pretender by Jackson Brown. We could talk about Jackson Brown all day long. Um, Trucks featured on Mr. Holland's Opus, a uh, very, very interesting uh, soundtrack, um, but uh, an interesting in a good way. John Lennon's on it, good stuff. But uh, Bob Dylan, a track I just brought up to, tonight uh, when I was talking to somebody or was uh, The Great uh, Hurricane, which is just a great track, which uh, sometime down the road we're going to dig into maybe some other tracks that are uh, longer, great story, maybe not as much guitar solo. That was my guitar solo there. That wasn't the best guitar solo I know. Please, please, folks, please don't judge me on my guitar solos. I don't want you to judge me. But uh, that being said, um, The Hurricane. I mean, when's the last time you blasted that track? Um, again, another one that fits very, very well in today's times, no matter how you're feeling. Um, because um, it's definitely a, a, a poignant, uh, a poignant uh, tale from 1976, which is crazy because we are just keep digging into this this, this 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 great time period that had great Jackson Brown tracks and great uh, Bob Dylan tracks like Hurricane, which definitely definitely uh, compiles the acts which were unfortunately uh, labeled against. Um, Reuben Hurricane Carter, which he could have been the champion of the world. That's what the lyrics state. Um, but Dylan definitely um, brought it with this track. We're only going to talk about the hurricane tonight, but you definitely can dig really. And we're, again, this is a show that plans to go on for who knows how long, who knows, could come on at any time and talk about any one of these artists and go even deeper. But tonight, you know, it's the same with Jackson Brown, the pretender, hurricane, Great, great tracks that are just really, really awesome and um, definitely tell a story, a story of struggle, overcoming struggle, having to deal with struggle, having to be blamed. Album version is eight minutes and 33 seconds long. You know how I feel about the long, uh, long tracks. I, I love them. I um, love them uh, quite, quite, quite a lot. 
um, really, really, really great uh, um, album it appears on too. You know, you ever get the uh, chance to listen to the Bob Dylan album Desire? Um, just going through that track and the track that comes right after it uh, is another really good one, Isis. I love, 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 love that track. Uh, very good storytelling is Bob Dylan. And if you haven't really sat down and listened to him because you have a problem with his voice, maybe just sit down and listen to some of those lyrics because they are super, super powerful. And they're pretty awesome too, you know. I, I, I seem to enjoy them at the right time. You know, that's like all of this music. You can't sometimes play it all back to back. Sometimes when you're in the mood, that's what makes music great. Um, just like this next artist, this song always keeps popping up. Third Eye Blind. Um, semi tarred Life. I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about this track. I'm not really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sure how I feel about Third Eye Blind. Um, for a while, I really liked them, especially when they first... Uh, came out. I liked them. I enjoyed uh, what they were uh, doing, I think, for a little bit of a period. Recently, they've had a resurgence. Uh, they've had some really, really awesome, it seems to be like uh, touring, like just some really, really great uh, touring opportunities for them playing venues that I would think that, you know, they wouldn't be at, you know, but that's what's cool, I think, is that there's been a lot of resurgence for a lot of bands like Limp Bizkit, um, which is cool. That's what we like. We like people going to see music. For me personally, if whatever you want to go see, whatever you like, go check that out. So what I did was dig back into this album and debut album is solid. Losing a whole year kicks it off. Losing a whole year. Okay, it was a little slower than that actually on the track. But uh, really, really uh, good, good album. I mean, that song there, I could take or leave. But uh, Jumper, Graduate, How's It Going to Be is a really good song. Narcolepsy, uh, 14 tracks on this album, almost a full hour, which again, um, and I, you know, not that, you know, her influences anything, but Oliver Levine cited the album as one of one that said uh, influenced her whole career. So if you like Oliver Levine, let's thank Third Eye Blind. If you are not a fan, that's who we have to thank for her doing this. Um, Definitely cool, though. They've been um, definitely got to open up for some really cool acts. Everyone from the Rolling Stones to you, too. You don't get to just be any old band and get to open up for uh, the Rolling Stones. So uh, they don't just pick anybody. They're just like, oh, we need a band. Let's find anybody. But uh, this debut uh, album um, sold quite a, quite a, quite a lot um, of albums and uh, really got a lot of good uh, praise which is really, really cool to uh, see. Um, when you go back and you look through uh, this, 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 this debut time period and you're hearing who they toured with and all these tracks, it's tough to follow it up, okay? But I, I'm going to say that the, day, the next album, Blue, if you get the time, it's another good one by the band, um, especially considering one of the only songs that I could still play on the guitar is Never Let You Go. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, I promise, no more guitar tonight. But the point is, is because I feel like if I'm going to do any more guitar, this is how someone, you're going to see this on the screen. Someone's going to come in here and do this. Oh, poor Perry, I'm sorry. Um, but one thing about Third Eye Blind I would like to point out is that Stephen Jenkins, the lead singer and leader of the band, well, it seems to be that he is the band. Um, which is cool, I guess, in a way. But in another way, I like to look back at some of these, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some of these times where you're a band and you last a long time. Like some of these other bands I talked about tonight, like Kate. Some of the members have been around the whole entire time. And what that shows me is that uh, you can work with um, the artist. But I guess the truth in, in this band is, the drummer has been around since 95. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, guitarist 2010, um, 2013, 2019. You got to build a relationship. So it seems like they are doing that, which is awesome. Um, but there are a lot of other bands out there like live in their new current situation. People got fired. We'll get to that at a later date. What I wanted to tell everyone out there is thank you so much for joining me tonight. 
this definitely was an awesome experience to be back here sharing classic, classic tracks with you. I love talking music. We're going to be back again next week. Uh, who knows why? Maybe Thursday, maybe Friday, maybe Wednesday, maybe Tuesday. Who knows? But we're always going to be here talking tunes. Um, got some big guests planned. I know. You're like, who, when? You keep saying that. When are they going to be here? They're coming. They're coming, and it's going to be awesome. So please stay tuned. Um, if you happen to be watching this, uh, make sure that you tune into At The Show Friday night, talking about Mortal Kombat. Got a classic soundtrack going to be talking about. So please tune in and join me and my main man, Yumper. It's going to be a great time. Um, that's all I got tonight, folks. I want to say thank you again. My name is Tony. This is The Hookup on Music. And guess what? Um, we're going to see you soon. And um, we're going to talk some music. And we're going to have a great time. So everyone out there, please take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Please look out for the audio version wherever you jam.